The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His faith, his face shone like the sun. And his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, A bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening. Before we dive into these amazing, powerful readings this Sunday, just a few uh, brief announcements. If you notice on the sides, especially the people that went to confession, if you notice something different, there's no pews on the side anymore. Someone stole them. No, just kidding. Actually, one of our generous parishioners said, Father, let me refinish all of the pews. Because if you remember back during COVID times, part of our precautions was that we had to wipe down all of the pews with this chemical. (laughs) And sadly, one of the side effects was that it stripped much of the varnish off the the tops there. And so it needed a lot of help. And so this parishioner, he has a shop here. He says, Father, let me me start. I'll, I'll, I'll do all of this for free. 71 pews in here. And these are heavy if you try to lift these guys up. And so they begin in the process now. It'll take about, he says, about a month. And so he'll take six out of time. So he took the first six, this one's on the sides, and then eventually they'll start cycling them in six at a time. So you'll slowly start seeing the pews being refreshed. And I thought, ah, oh, this is a good time. And so there's a little surprise too. So we're going with a slightly different stain on the pews, which I think will be beautiful. It'll be beautiful, I think. But I thought, ah, let's go big. And so hopefully not too many people will complain about it. But but I think it will be beautiful. I know it's hard. Everybody's got an opinion, so it's always hard. But but I think it will be beautiful. It will match the beautiful parish we have here. Second announcement. So as many of you know, we're going to the Holy Land in November as a parish family. We currently have 48 people going. We filled up so fast that there was a wait list, and so our pilgrimage agent said, Father, do you want to open up a second bus? (laughs) And so, because they had reserved 60 total rooms for us. And so I said, you know what, I'd hate for the people on the wait list not to be able to go with their parish family. So I said, let's go for it. Green light it. Let's let's open up the more seats. So, happy to announce, if if you wanted to go on the Holy Land trip, we currently have 12 more spots this opened up. So a total of 60 parishioners will be going. So if you still wanted to go to the Holy Land, again, check the website, the link, and all the information there. And so, praise God, 48 brothers and sisters will be going there. And so uh, please, there's a link in the bulletin as well this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.
So remember last weekend, we had to read a letter from the bishop. It was a very heavy letter about the ongoing abuse that we have to atone for as a church. I don't know about you, but whenever conflict happens, I've always been like this, but I'm, I'm a runner. Conflict comes, I, I just want to flee. I'm, I'm, I don't like fighting. <laughs> I don't like conflict. So I, I've, if I look through my whole life and, and I tend to run away from my problems. Right? It's, it's an easier thing to do. And especially when you think about such a heavy topic that I, I had to read the letter about last weekend, that was my first instinct, run away. Hide. Bury your head in the sand. Especially when it's done by church leaders, priests. And whenever I think about this issue, especially when my first tendency is to run away, I think of these beautiful readings today. St. Paul writes, Bear your hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. To bear the hardships of life, because it says because we're Christian doesn't mean our life is going to be any easy. But rather, he wants us as Christians to remember. We look at the world differently than anybody else. We look at the world radically different. When you have eyes of faith, we don't live the same as non-Christians because we see the deeper reality. Case in point, the story in the gospel today on Mount Tabor, which, by the way, on the Holy Land pilgrimage, we will go to this spot. We know where this happened. There's a beautiful church built right on top of this mountain, and we'll have mass there. This beautiful story of our Lord transfigured before them. And the question is, why? Why did Jesus only take Peter, James, and John, and not the other ones? Why only these three? On Mount Tabor, what Christ did here, for a brief moment, Jesus revealed who he was. It says here, and he was transfigured before them, and his, sh- and his face shone like the sun. He became white as light. That means he was so brilliant in his radiance, it hurt their eyes. Have you ever looked at a sun? Remember when we were kids? We used to look at the sun, and then our teachers or our parents would yell at us. Stop looking at the sun, you're going to go blind, is what they told us. And rightly so, if we, looked, if we kept looking at the sun... We would damage our pupils, right? So that gives us a sense. So Jesus revealed his glory to them. Why? Because he knew that shortly after this encounter on Mount Tabor at the Transfiguration, Jesus would shortly, after this moment, be arrested, betrayed, and killed. In other words, they were about to go through their hardest trials. And what is the tendency to to do whenever we experience hardship? Run. Jesus understood this about them, so he says, let me reveal myself to you so that memory of who I truly am will sustain you in your darkest hour. He reveals his glory. When you grab a bulletin today on the cover, there's a very famous Renaissance painting by the Renaissance artist Raphael. It depicts this encounter. That painting on the bulletin, when Raphael was dying in the year 1520, he's on his deathbed and he specifically asked for this painting to be brought into his room. So there is Raphael, one of the greatest artists in human history, lying on his deathbed, and he says, let me look at the transfigured Jesus. Why? Because death is scary. 
Death is one of the hardest things any of us will ever go through. And Raphael understood this. And there was that tendency in him to forget. And so he said, bring my painting into the foot of my bed so I can stare at the transfigured Jesus. Because Raphael understood Jesus is God and not just anybody else. The church, in all of our frailty, especially from men like us, me, what is the church? The world sees the church just as a community of people that get together, they have a common goal. Ah, but when you see the church with the eyes of faith, like St. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says, writing about the mystery of the church, the, the community of believers, said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, for he laid down his life for her. Meaning, what he saw in the church was not just a community of believers, but he saw the bride of Christ. Or in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus describes himself, I am the bridegroom. And who is his bride? Us. So in the great mystery, what the church is, it is the bride whom Christ laid down his life for. You know, this parish here, it's it's a beautifully active parish. Guess how many weddings I have this year? Just me. Not Father Reggie, this me. I have 20 weddings to go to. <laughs> Some of the weekends I even have two a day, which is a beautiful problem. I'm not complaining. But what's a, one of my favorite moments is when the bride and the bridegroom exchange vows. And I love it because I have the best seat in the house because I'm right there in front of them and I'm <laughs> feeding them their lines. And there's a beautiful line and we all recognize it where they will say to each other, I will be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. Those are utterly profound words. And in many ways, when couples say that, of course, they're they're young, And those words don't quite hit as hard yet because when we're young and we're beautiful, our bodies are immaculate. But then that last line, in sickness and in health, began to take on new meaning as you move through life. Because what happens as we move through life? We get old. And sometimes disease hits. Things that we never planned for, unforeseen things. And the body is not as beautiful as it once was. This fact hit home. I was, it was, I was 27, I was still a seminarian, a group of seminarians, we decided to go on another pilgrimage. Because remember, I studied in Rome, so once you're, once you're living in Europe, it's easy to, to go around Europe. There's a lot of cheap flights once you're in Europe there. And so a group of us decided to go on a pilgrimage to Turkey, And we wanted to follow the footsteps of St. Paul. Because many of the letters that St. Paul wrote are now in modern-day Turkey. And so we wanted to go to those cities that they were written about in the Bible. And on this particular day, there was a group of seminarians, and there happened to be a couple, another American couple. They're probably in their 70s. They happened to be there as well as part of our tour group. And they happened to be from Oakland, in fact. And so when you're traveling abroad and all of a sudden you run to Americans, there's an immediate kinship when you meet other, when you're in a foreign land and you meet other people from your country. And so we said, oh, you're Americans too, and you're from California? Amazing, great. And so we we hit it off, we started talking, and we were in this ancient city in Turkey. And as a particular city, you, you had to walk up a cobblestone road. And no cobblestone road, it's, it's, tricky because it's not flat like we have in modern cities but it was it was treacherous 
And this particular woman, she was a bit older, and you can tell she wasn't with the best of health. And so as she's walking up this, this cobblestone hill, she began to stumble. Her husband immediately went to her side. With, with his right hand, grabbed hers, and with his other hand, put it around her waist. And in a very slow pace, they started walking together up the hill. And I watched this scene as a 27-year-old man studying to be a priest. And as I watched this old couple from Oakland, I heard God's voice say to me, that's how I want you to love the church. The church will be your bride. This is how I want you to love. And I've never forgotten that moment. Because what it told me was, the body of the church is easy to love when everything is going fine and perfect and beautiful, just as it is in, in any marriage, and everything's going fine and daddy and everyone is healthy. All right, but what happens when all of a sudden we get older and disease hits? And the body is no longer as pristine and beautiful as it once was. What do you do then? Oh, that's the opportunity now to remember. Love. Harder. Oh, that man who, who grabbed his, his wife's hands taught me that valuable lesson. Stop running. The intensity of love now must be more realized. We're going to be walking up a tough, hard road. The church. Because of the sins of her members. But, if we remember the transfigured Lord. He will give us this grace and the strength to be faithful always. He took up Peter, James, and John and his brother, led them up a high mountain, and transfigured himself before him. We have to remember the truth, despite our failings to be like that man. When the hard times come, to love even more.